let's say you're building a tank game. A tank game where we have a tank here that fires a projectile. The projectile goes up, comes down, bam, hits somewhere, explodes. Now when the player is selecting where they want that projectile to, to go, you want them to kind of have a preview. You want, you want to be able to render this line for the player to show them exactly where the projectile will travel and where it will land. And so we're going to have to project, predict the path of the projectile so that we can display it for them. So that's what we're going to tackle today. And let's see what we've got to work with. First of all, we've got the force of gravity. That's called G. And we have the initial velocity that the projectile was fired with. We'll call that V naught. And we have the initial starting point of where the projectile was fired from. We'll call that X naught. And using these three things and the integrals we learned in our last video, we can project predict uh, where the projectile is going to be at any given time. How is that useful? Because then we can say, well, where is it going to be at time 0? T0. Where is it going to be at time 1? T1. Time 2. And so on. We can break the path up into little points, and then we can draw lines between each one of these points, and then we have our preview path like we want to do. So we know what we want. How are we going to get there? Let's take a look at gravity. Gravity is, on the surface of the Earth, negative 9.1 meters per second squared. That's an acceleration. An acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. So that's a rate function. If you remember from our previous video, we can integrate a rate function, and that will count up all the little changes in velocity to give us a final velocity at any given time. So that's not what we want, but it's headed in the right direction. So let's integrate this velocity and this, uh, this gravity, this acceleration. We're going to integrate the acceleration and see what happens. So new color. We want to know the velocity at any given time. And to get it, we are going to integrate the gravity with respect to time. Integrating the gravity with respect to time. How do we do that? Oh my goodness. We have, we've not seen this before. So I'm going to introduce some rules here on the right. Some nice laws of mathematics that will, will help us solve this, um, solve this equation to get our velocity. The first rule is that if we have a constant inside the integral, that's the same as having a constant outside the integral. Okay? We can take this constant and pull it out of the integral. Gravity is, in fact, a constant. Gravity doesn't change unless you're up in outer space or inside, you know, inside the core of the, of the Earth or something like that. For our purposes, gravity is never going to change because this projectile is not going to get shot into space. So, back to my color, we can say that since gravity is constant, we can bring it out and we have the integral with respect to time. How do we, in how do, we do that? The empty integral, integral of nothing with respect to time. Let's get another rule. An integral with nothing with respect to time is just t plus a constant of integration, which I will go over in a moment, what the constant of integration means. So, let's see, we have g, and then let's do our integral. Integral with respect to time is just t plus a constant of integration. Okay? That means that if we want to know the velocity at a given time, all we have to do is take gravity, multiply it by whatever time it is, and then we know the velocity of our projectile. Except that we have to add in the initial velocity, remember, because we started by shooting it up into space. So let's take this guy and replace him with the initial velocity. 
That's what the constant of integration is. It's what was the initial value. Here we're finding velocity by integrating, and so our constant of integration will be the initial velocity value that you see that we specified, we used to specify our problem. Good. So now we have an equation that can give us the velocity at any given point. Well, as we learned in the previous video, if we want to get our position, which I'm going to call x, what is that? Well, that is the integration of velocity with respect to time. Okay? A velocity, remember velocity, equals the change in position divided by the change in time. That's what we covered uh, last video. Uh, did we cover that last video? I think we did. Maybe the video before that. Anyway, I think you all know that. Velocity is change in position with respect to time. So if we integrate it, we're going to count up all the little changes in position over time, and we're going to get a position. We're going to accumulate those changes of our velocity rate function. And that's what an integral does. So if we integrate our velocity, we're going to get the position. Oh my goodness. I uh, forgot to make this a function. The position at a given time. And let's see, our velocity is, plugging it in from, from up here, our velocity is g t plus v naught dt. Okay. Now, how do we deal with this plus? I'm going to give us one more rule of integration, and that is a plus b is the same as integral of a dt plus integral of b dt. In other words, if you have an integral that's the sum of two things, you can break it up into the sum of two integrals. That is allowed. That is good. So let's apply that rule right here. We're going to break this into two integrals. We're going to say integral gt dt dt plus integral of v naught dt. Good. We're well on our way. Now we have these constants inside the integral, so we can take them out. We're going to take out our constants. We're going to get g, I'm taking out g, times t dt, plus the initial velocity is a constant. It never changes. No matter where the projectile is, the initial velocity stays the same. So it is a constant. We can take it out. Good. We know how to do this guy. That is our... Um, that is, we're just going to apply this rule right here. But how do we deal with this integral that has a t on the inside? So now I'm going to introduce a general way to integrate any polynomial. This is a polynomial. We can pretend that there's a little 1 right here. Boop, 1. t to the 1 power. That makes it a polynomial. So I'm going to introduce a rule to integrate any polynomial. We have t to the n where n is any number, dt, that is the same as 1 over n plus 1 times t to the n plus 1 plus a constant of integration. So this n in our case is 1. So if we want to do this integral, okay, we're going to go, well, first g, let's carry our g over. It's not inside the integral, so it doesn't affect anything. But then now let's take care of what was inside the integral. 1 over n is 1, so 1, one plus 1 is 2. Okay. t to the n plus 1, n is 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 squared. And then I'm just going to fold this constant of integration in with the other constants of integration that we're going to have, v naught times this uh, t we have an integral dt, that's the same thing as t plus a constant of integration. We don't know what the constant of integration is yet, so we can just combine them, combine this constant of integration plus that constant of integration, make a new constant of integration. We still don't know what it is, but uh, if we think about it, just like when we were trying to find the velocity, our constant of integration was the initial velocity, now we're trying to find the position, 
So our constant of integration will be the initial position. Initial position. Oof, that was a lot of work, but let's see where it got us. Uh, let's just take an example. Let's pretend t is zero. At the, we're at the very beginning of our simulation. If this is zero, then this entire term will be multiplied by zero, so it will cancel out. And this is zero, so this term will be canceled out. So we're going to get zero plus zero plus the initial position. And that makes perfect sense because at the beginning of our simulation, we're going to be at the initial position. So that at least that little check right there worked out. Um, so good. Let's continue to the code section, and we're going to um, we're going to use this. We're going to start plugging in t values to create all these little points that will give us a line, a nice curve, a parabola, in fact, that will let us demonstrate the. Uh, the predicted projectile path to give a preview to our user. Okay, that was a lot, but let's go. All right, that was a lot of math, but it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be really cool. Here we render a little box that represents the uh, projectile. I render it at the position of the projectile, and it's black, color 000 is, is, is black. And then here I change the color to red because we're going to render the path that the, uh, that the projectile is going to take. And we're going to do that by rendering a bunch of lines from x1, from x not to x1, um, where we use this project, predict projectile at time function to figure out where the uh, where the points on the line should be. It's going to all come together into a path. So this just means every 0.2 seconds we're going to have a position on the line. So let's look at our predict projectile at time. Well, it's empty because we have to fill it up with our calculus, with our polynomial that we integrated um, during the previous portion of the video. So let's take a look at our formula, going up on screen, bam, there it is. So let's start with g times 1 half, instead of 1 half I'm gonna write 0.5, because that's, you know, computers like that more, times t squared. Instead of t squared, I'm just gonna write t times t. That's the same thing as t squared, and it's really easy. And then we have a plus, and then we say v naught times t, and then finally we say plus x naught. That was super easy, guys. We return that. We press F5 to run our program. I'm telling you, this math stuff, I like it. I think it's super cool. All right, and then we have the projectile gets fired, and you can see the red line perfectly predicts the path of the projectile. We can see exactly where it's going to go from that red line. Super cool. Math works. Integrals are great. Next week, we're going to learn about the opposite of integrals, which are derivatives. See you next time.